I had a sneaky suspicion I'd see you here. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It is June 21st. Now, tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When you hear that market bell going off, <laughs> me and Lily Star are going on. We're there for about an hour to talk to our viewers live about the tickers they're interested in. I share stocks with you all week, but maybe I'm not covering the ones you want me to. So if you got a ticker you want us to look at, bring it on in, drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the information, Lily will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth. But we're only there for an hour, so it's first come, first serve. Get there early. So what do we do on this show? We like to look at hot OTC and penny stocks. In other words, we're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And the way I determine what a hot penny stock is, is by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat. When I find that, then I go looking for the catalysts in the filings of the news presses. And when I find one, then I put that on my list of stocks I'm gonna share with you. And I've got some for you right now. Let's jump on into that first one then. This is Cone. Ticker K-O-A-N, Resonant Blends. Now, this one caught my attention early this morning. I found this on the charts. It was a one-hour chart, atypical breakout. Look at that. She is ready to break out. I put that up before the bell went off. 50 minutes after the bell went off, this is the other picture. Wow, we had a nice rip in the morning, and she had good reason. There was big news today. They are making a merger deal with a company in a completely different sector, a hot sector, and they're just gonna add that onto the business they're already doing. I like what I'm seeing on the charts, and I like what I'm reading in the news. So Cone finished today at .042 with 23.5% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We call this the better tier. It's better because the companies must audit their financials. They have to use a CPA. That makes them better than the pinks, which just gives us disclosures. They're just giving us numbers, no accounting. And we've got both of those green ticks we're always looking for. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. A lot of important information being represented by those green ticks. So what does Resonant Blends do? Well, this is what they are currently doing and still doing. Based in Calabasas, California, Resonant Blends Inc. is a cannabis holding company. Though I really wouldn't call them a cannabis company myself because they don't have any cannabis around. They're just using the THC and the CBDs from the cannabis. Our company is centered on value-added, holistic wellness and lifestyle brands. Resonant Blends has developed the world's first cannabis cordial. The Cohen cordials combine THC and CBD with botanical terpenes to deliver an all-natural, plant-derived, single-dosed experience that can be enjoyed straight out of the bottle or poured into any beverage, delivering consistent and precisely calibrated experiences each and every time. That's great, a standardized THC dosage. Cone Cordials were awarded Best New Brand of 2021 at the exclusive Luxury Meats Cannabis Conference and also won a Clio Cannabis for packaging and design. This is their item. It is a little tiny bottle that size, like those little five-hour shots you get, and each one of these have a calibrated dosage in them. Now, the neat thing here is, is that they have seven different types, seven different buzzes. Folks, not all buzzes are the same. If you smoke marijuana or you drink whiskey, you're not gonna have the same buzz. They're different, and they're different with cannabis as well. The biggest difference most notice is between indica and sativa. Indica, in the bed, in the couch. Indica makes you stoned. Takes away all your drive, all your energy. You just wanna sit down and relax. Great for unwinding at the end of the evening and sleeping on. Sativa, on the other hand, is like a kite. It gets you high. You get lots of energy and you're bouncing around and you get a lot done. Two totally different buzzes. That's why it's important to know which one you're taking. Well, here we've got love, calm, delight, wonder, balance, create, and play. Each one is a different buzz. 
but you don't smoke this you drink it and I've never done a drink of THC I've done edibles which makes the body heavy and the head clear I've smoked which makes the head a bit foggy and the body a bit foggy I don't know what drinking does that's gonna go through our kidneys it's gonna be a whole different type of feeling they've also got this product in powder form so that you can add it to your own beverages now this is what they're doing right now but they are expanding and you're gonna see that in the news so what was the relative volume around the company today? Whoa, huge jump, almost a thousand percent, going from 242,000 to 2.2 million. A lot of attention was paid to this company today. Share structure for Cohen. Outstanding shares, not bad, 77 million. And if they are correct with the restricted share count of 48 million, we have a float of 28 million. I can live with that. That's not a bad float at all. 28 million. Looking at the financials for the company. Not a lot here, but they're growing. 2020, they had nothing. 2021 it was 27,000. 2022, 49,000. We know it's thousands because we got to add three more zeros to any of the numbers we see on these charts. Looking at it quarterly, not doing a lot, right? But this news that just came out, this is going to change everything. Disclosures for the company. We've got a 10Q, their most recent financial. They were late filing it, but they got it in just in time. Woo, by the skin of their teeth. If you want to know more about the company, forget about Google. Don't go jumping around from website to website. Just dive into the most recent 10Q or 10K. You will get everything from A to Z in there. Get used to them, folks. There's everything you want to know. Don't let it intimidate you. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So we are going back here to September of last year, so I can show you they made a deal back then. The company is in agreement to acquire California-based Cane Company. Now, I don't know if they got it or not. I actually didn't read that. Most of the news here is about their cordials. It's everything that they're doing, getting it into shops, adding new products to their line. But we've got two pieces of news here that we need to jump into. First one is a shareholder update. These are always great. You don't know what sort of information you're going to get with these, but they're coming straight from the management about things they've done and things they're going to do. We're in their head. And then the other piece of news, which is big. Dive into that first one here. This came out May 23rd. The company is pleased to report it has entered into a non-binding letter of intent to complete an acquisition of Pegasus Specialty Vehicles. Since late 2019, we've been attempting to raise money to implement our business plan. However, we've run into a lot of problems, federal cannabis reform, the restrictions on commercial banking, the saturated nature of the cannabis industry, they've been having problems. However, they got through them. After completion of our due diligence, we signed a non-binding letter of intent with Pegasus Specialty Vehicles on April 21, 2023. Pegasus is an innovative leader in the low emission and zero emission electric vehicle and emerging hydrogen fuel cell technology for school buses and specialty vehicles. Not just EV, not just hydrogen, they are working with both. The leadership team from Pegasus is well known and respected throughout the industry and their relationships have created a nationwide network of distributors to sell their buses and specialty vehicles in all 50 states, Canada, Micronesia, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands and Caribbeans. School buses, they're everywhere. Everybody has school buses. Now the next piece of news kind of picks up right where we left off. The company is pleased to report it has entered into a definitive agreement and plan of merger to complete the acquisition of Pegasus Specialty Vehicles. Before it was a non-binding letter they were thinking about, now they're doing it. The Ohio-based company is an innovative leader in the low emission, zero emission electric vehicle and emerging hydrogen fuel cell technology for school buses and specialty vehicles. Pegasus currently has a substantial production backlog and nationwide network of dedicated distributors. They've already got orders. They're just having to build them and get them out. So they have orders sitting there right now. Pegasus has developed strategic partnerships with leaders in the EV and hydrogen fuel cell sectors such as Peterbilt, 
Zeus electric chassis, Hyperion Motors, and Via Motors. These partners, along with Pegasus, are expected to play pivotal roles in the transformation of school buses and specialty vehicles from traditional diesel to both EV and hydrogen technology vehicles. There are substantial state and national subsidy programs, including the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which recently announced $400 million in grants to help school districts pay for alternate and low emission buses as part of its five-year, $5 billion clean school bus program. You think they'll get a piece of that pie? I think so. I think this is huge. Every state has lots of schools, lots of school buses, and they're going to have to convert. They are, well, they're pigs when it comes to carbon. They are just not very friendly. So this to me seems very hot. So they got their cannabis cordials. Eh, they're doing okay right now. But this, this is hot. Hydrogen and EV school buses and specialty vehicles. You know what else is hot? The chart. Let's go take a look at that. Doesn't exactly jump out at you as a hot chart, does it? Right? But focus in on it, it looks better. This is Cone, ticker K O A N. This is Resonant Blends. And we're going to be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So this is Cone's six-month, four-hour view. Both our high bubble and our low bubble happened in May. May 10th, we had a low of a penny and a half. Two weeks later, we had a high of about 10 cents. That is a 600% run here. Now take notice, our 200-day SMA just came into the picture right around the time of that low bubble. Now I have a suspicion. When a new SMA comes onto the board, the way I see it, the price runs to that new SMA, like there's this gravitational pull around it. Whether that SMA is above or below, the price normally goes to it. Well, that's what it looks like happened here. She shot up to that 200 in a hurry. Look at the size of these bars. She couldn't wait to get up there. She stayed up there for three days, and then she fell down to just a little over three cents. Now, since this time, our volume has been there, and it's growing right now. Today, we had a nice, strong push-off. She got through her 50-day SMA on the 4-hour, and she's pulled back, sitting on top of her 200 haul. Oscillators look strong. Everything is starting to push up. They were down, but they are recovering, though our RSI has pulled back a little bit. Now, admittedly, the 4-hour chart is not the great-looking chart. It is the 1-hour chart. This is where I found the setup this morning. So you see, she was way above the 50 here, came down under it, and today, pre-market, she was setting up to break that 50, and that's what I noticed, and she did. The volume came in, and she took off, and it looks like she hit around 10, 10.05. She hit her high. We'll check that out in the five minute. I like to get out of a strong running play. If I got in it at the bell, I want to get out by 10, 10 in the morning. Now, I don't know that it's going to fall. What I do know is that there's normally a pause across the market, generally speaking, right at 10, 10.05. And a lot of stocks that have been running all morning, the first half hour, that's when they fall. And it starts to fall fast. So I normally just split my day into two trading segments. The first 30 minutes of the day up to 10, 10.05, and then the rest of the day. And that's what this was perfect for. This was a nice run first thing in the morning. Take that, and then she fell back. She is on top of her nine. Oscillators say she's still got heat, but there is pullback on the RSI still. Five day, five minute. So let's see when she did finish that climb. 10.15, 10.15. So I would have got out a little bit early. Who cares? You know, I really don't mind leaving money on the table. I mean, I'm not happy with it, but let's face it. You don't go broke leaving money on the table. You go broke not taking your gains. Well, look, she started to fall fast right after that. Now, yeah, you could have probably got out here, hopefully, but why? Just take your gains at 10 o'clock, be happy what you got, and do that over and over and over again every day. Don't get greedy after 10. Just get used to taking that, that piece of cake every morning. So once she hit that high, she came all the way down, hit firmly and hard on the 50-day SMA, bounced up, Fought the 20, could not beat that one, came back down to the 50, and that's where she's sitting right now, just above her 50. Oscillators are pretty weak right now, but it's big news. They're getting this hydrogen electric 
bus company that can work in every single state and they've got distributors and backed up orders. What more could you ask for? Companies got very little revenue, so this is gonna help them in a big way. Cone, I think it is worth getting into, just like their buses. Let's take a look at a hot penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker GRNQ Green Pro Capital. Her chart's on fire. The 200-day SMA on the four-hour is a bull. She's already in an uptrend, got a lot of strength and a lot of power. And she just came out with a huge news press, unexpected. She has made some real bold statements in this. I think this is a catalyst and a half. GRNQ, she finished the day today at $2.29 with just about 17% gains. So they tell us down here that Green Pro provides a wide range of business solution services to small and medium-sized businesses located in Asia with an initial focus on Hong Kong, China, and Malaysia. That's a huge market over there. Our cross-border business services include, among other services, tax planning, trust and wealth management, cross-border listing advisory services, and transaction services. We also operate a venture capital business. We anticipate our venture capital business will also engage in the purchase, acquisition, and rental of commercial properties. We will be targeting companies located in Asia, South Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, China, Thailand, and Singapore. So they've obviously got big plans and they've got big news. So what was the relative volume today around that big news? Huge, oh my God, that's like 10,000% increase. I think that's right, over 100 times her normal volume. Jumping from 32,000 to 4.2 million. I told you this was a big catalyst. Share structure for the company is excellent. We've got a low float. Their outstanding share count is only at 7.8 million. Now, I don't have a clue what the float is, but a low float is anything under 10 million. Well, we're there, so I don't know what the float is and I don't care, I'm liking it. Financials for the company, well, it doesn't look too bad actually. They've been increasing over the last three years, going from 2.2 to 2.9 to 3.6 million, and they got to keep 2.6 million. That's not bad. Quarterly, well, they're still making money. They're still making profits. However, the money's been everywhere, up and down. They went from 807,000 to 1.3 million, and right now they're about half of that at 637,000. But they are still making money. Now, I got to presume that this big news is going to help their revenues in a big way. Just a presumption. Looking at their disclosures, we don't have anything new over here except their most recent financial, their 10Q. As I always say, you want to know about the company, dive into that. All right, let's take a look at her news. She has got a lot of news over here, but it's all old. All of this comes from 2018, 2017, 2016. So there's no need to consider any of that. However, we do have two pieces of fresh news found at the bottom. Uh, back in April, they established another office over in Malaysia. And then we got the big news that came out May 30th. Green Pro's incubated company, Inkasa X, to launch Malaysian satellite to lead Asian space economy. Green Pro Capital is a business incubator. They help other companies to grow. With a diversified business portfolio and the second largest shareholder of Inkasa X. The company received the exact time and date of the launch of the satellite. The satellite is slated to launch at 7.30, June 27th. That is in about five days, folks. And that could be a catalyst. It could be a rocket to the moon. This will spearhead a massive thrust to propel Malaysia's space tech ecosystem. After years of hard work, research and development, and fundraising, we are finally here. It is a giant step for Inkasa X's dream since our incorporation in 2021 to launch our Designed in Malaysia satellite into space. Green Pro Capital CEO Dr. C.K. Lee says, We are confident that Inkasa X will be successful in achieving their goal of becoming the first company in Malaysia to become a unicorn. What's a unicorn? A company valued over $1 billion. 
What a bold statement. They have big plans for this. Now, they don't lay out any numbers, but this is a huge thing. So what does this satellite do? Well, they tell us down here that it gives them internet. The Asian community is a union of 10 countries representing 680 million people. And Casa X is a technological social inclusion company that strives to provide internet connectivity by offering satellite as a service to countries in the Asian region. That is 680 million potential customers. This is what they call a low earth orbit satellite. We haven't been able to use satellites for the internet because it takes too long for the information to get there and come back. Latency. Well, with low orbit satellites, you don't have that problem. And you can get internet anywhere, out in the middle of the desert, out in the middle of the ocean. You can get it anywhere. Now, as far as I know, you needed more than one satellite. You needed a couple of them to cover the area. So I don't know exactly how this is all going to work, but it is huge news. And they're anticipating this to be a unicorn, a billion dollar business. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at that hot chart for ticker GRNQ. This is Green Pro Cap. We're looking at a six month, four hour view. You can see our 200 day SMA was falling, and right now she's bowled around and she is on an uptrend, just like our price. She ended her downtrend when she hit this low of $1 in December, and since time, she has been on an uptrend. Now, once she got over that 200, she predominantly wanted to stay there. She did come underneath it a little bit here and there, but doesn't really show any inclination of wanting to come down. Matter of fact, right now, she's showing inclination of wanting to climb. The last three days, she has been climbing, bouncing off of the 200 and the bottom of the channel. A perfect bounce. She went from $1.63 up to $2.64 before she fell back to a price of about $2.21 after market right now. The volume has been growing and was exceptionally strong today. And our oscillators are looking great. Our PPO and our MACD are both climbing strong and our RSI is clear up to 66. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. She was pretty much going sideways here on the 200, took that dip and off that bubble she bounced and it has been climbing ever since. Now you can see she is fighting the top of the channel right now. Here comes our nine day SMA crossing it so we have a good chance of this pushing up further. Oscillators still looking good. They've got a lot of strength but they are showing a wee bit of pullback because she is settling down right now. Five day, five minute. So there's our low of $1.55 right underneath the channel. She got on top of the channel and took off like lightning, crossing the center, crossing the top. She bounced back down to the center. You can see she's respecting that. Got back up on the top and that's where she's sitting. This could be the last bounce. Now, was she bouncing off of the 200 or off of the channel? I really don't know, but it looks like she's coming back down to that 200. She is respecting the 200. That's what we like to see. Oscillators. Uh, they look like they are in recovery right now. They're all just now starting to turn back up. I like GRNQ. June 27th, probably going to be a catalyst. I don't know what shooting a satellite into space is worth, but we're going to find out. I think GNRQ is a curious one to keep your eye on. Our next stock comes from the OTC. This is ticker DPUI, Discount Print USA. You can probably guess what they do. Now, this isn't the first time we've looked at this company. We did take a gander at it back in March. And to be completely honest, there has not been any new news or filings since we looked at it. In other words, there's no fresh catalyst. But to be completely honest, the news that did come out back then was big. There was lots of news about them breaking into new markets and expanding their business. So why are we looking at it right now if there's no fresh catalyst? You know why? It's because of the chart. That four hour chart is looking sweet and tempting, but the one hour chart is hot. And the thing about a hot chart is you don't have to have a big catalyst. You don't even need to have a fresh catalyst. A good stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. That's why we're looking at DPUI. So she finished the day today at a real low price, double zero one seven, though she did end the day down about five and a half percent. She's on the pink tier and current She's got a transfer agent verified, but where is that verified profile? We would like to see that. Now, as you've probably already guessed, 
the company is into printing. Discount Print USA is a commercial print brokerage firm that offers low priced, high quality printing services to individuals and businesses alike. It's just that easy. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Considering she had no fresh catalyst. Come on. <laughs> no fresh catalyst. No new news. No new filings. Look at that explosion in volume. She went from just a little over six million to about 34 and a half million. A lot of excitement around this company without any catalyst. Share structure for DPUI. We got 92.3 million outstanding. If we trust the numbers, we could have a float here of about 65 million. Financials for DPUI. She's making some money and it is growing. Three years ago, she was at 37,000, jumped to 66,000 and at the end of their fiscal year, which was June of 2022, they were at 304,000. Quarterly, yeah, they're making money. And if I add up the last four, so we're at 360,000 for the last four quarters when these last four quarters were only 304. So they are making more money. They are growing. Disclosures for discount print. All right, we've got two SC 13 GAs. What these are are filings when you have a new partner come on board. In other words, you have an investor that buys enough shares that they qualify for partnership. So this is Quick Capital. They bought themselves about 9 million shares and they earned themselves 7.6% of the company. That's a good thing. You've got a big investor. And we had another one of those back in May. That's about all we got here. So let's run on over to that news. As I previously mentioned, they haven't got any new news or new filings. However, this news which we covered in the March video is still hot. It's still valid. This is our stale catalyst. They were expanding into a lot of new markets with a lot of new offices and they said they were going to continue adding offices over the next two to four years. Let me give you an idea of what we're talking about here. This one came out March 7th. Discount Print USA announces initial entry into a $50 billion market, the U.S. convention industry market. The company's new division, Convention Printing of America, has opened 11 new local offices in key U.S. cities in the last five months. The company's aggressive plan is to open 39 more regional U.S. offices in the next 24 months. That would give them a total of 50 offices just for the convention industry. And the offices they've already opened up are in cities where they hold a lot of conventions. Pretty smart. The next piece of news comes out March 16th. The company announces initial entry into the $10 billion market of banner printing. The company's new division, Banner Printing of America, has opened 28 new local offices in key U.S. cities in the last eight months. And the company's aggressive plan is to open 250 more offices in the next 48 months. And this is where they've put all of those offices. They tell us here that over the next 48 months, the company plans to open another 250 offices in major cities, which will then give us an office in almost 300 cities in America. That is expansion. The next piece of news comes out April 18th. The company announces entry into another $30 billion market, Web to Print. You'd have thought they'd have been doing this one already. The company's new online e-commerce storefront is a self-service portal where customers can place orders 24-7 and receive a live estimate. The $30 billion global web to print market is anticipated to reach $40 billion by 2028. It is a huge market. And the last piece of news came out May 4th. The company strengthens its position in a projected $50 billion market the global event and exhibition market. The company announces that it has become an authorized distributor for the showdown displays. This deal adds over 1,000 new products that the company can offer to exhibitors attending trade shows in America. The global event and exhibition market is anticipated to reach $50 billion. Now there's a lot more information about what each of these divisions is doing in those news presses, but now you've got the idea. They're talking about hundreds of offices around the country working with conventions, banners, people like me and you, businesses. They should be doing a lot. 
and the chart is set up to do a lot and it looks like the volume is going to back up the chart let's go take a look at it let's take a look at dp this is sticker dpui discount printing usa and that is a six month four hour view six months ago we had a high of two and a half cents it fell all the way down here to May's low of double zero one one. Now we took a look at it here March 7th. She was at about double zero four. She fell down here to double zero three and then had over a 300% run going to 1.2 cents. Then she fell. But you can see after that low bubble, the volume has started coming in strong. And it really picked up when she had her first intentional breakthrough the 50 day SMA. This tells me I want to climb. I'm not going to stay down. So you've got to be patient. Well, we've got about eight days here of being patient, nothing going on. And then yesterday she broke out hard. Lots of volume came into the picture. She definitely got over the 50 day and she's been sitting up there for the last day and a half. Oscillators are strong and pushing up, not real strong, but they are pushing up our PPO is on top of the bank. You can barely see it. MACD is crossing the signal line and our RSI is climbing. But as I said, it wasn't the four hour chart that looks luscious. It looks good, but that is a 250% climb to get to that 200. I think she can do it by looking at the one hour chart. So here's our 200 day SMA, the perfect atypical breakout chart coming down. Here's our first breakthrough the 200, the intentional breakthrough to say, I'm going to climb. It comes back down without losing any strength and then bounces again. Right now we're on that bounce. Volume has been strong the last two days. She is right there at the 200. I think she's gonna break it and start to climb. Our oscillators. Everything is pushing up. Let's see what our MACD says. All right, our MACD is at a crossover. It is actually pushing down right now, as is our RSI. But the chart looks good, but you can't overlook the technicals. Five day, five minute. 200 day SMA just came into the picture. The price was under the 200 and whoa, she pushed up towards it. I'm telling you a gravitational pull. Pulled it right through the 200 all the way up here to double zero two three. She's come back, hit the 200, hit the 200, fell under it. She's jumping around a lot, but she's hanging near that 200. With that volume spurt that came in today and the stale catalyst, we could see a nice run here. DPUI is on a low right now, so she has a lot of room to grow. I would put DPUI on my watch list. She has potential to give us some good gains. Now, maybe I'm biased because I did all the research, but I think all three stocks are hot. Cone, I really like this one. No, not because of the THC shots. That's cool. No, I'm talking about that merger that they've got going on with that EV slash hydrogen company that's going to be producing school buses for all 50 states. That is huge and it's got to be done and done soon. I like that one. Then you got GRNQ. They're putting the satellite in space for the Asian area so that they have internet. Now, I don't know a whole lot about that, so more due diligence is necessary. But the chart's in a good place, and the launch is on the 27th. Then we got DPUI, stale catalyst, lots of them, huge, going to be going on for years. And their chart is set up. I do like all of them. But of course, don't take my word for anything. Do your own due diligence behind mine. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.